Okay, guys, we're pretty much done with all of the authentication side of things. The only thing that we have to do is require the user to authenticate because right now, uh, you know, if we perform any operation like creating a post, uh, you can see that I could just create a post and that's it. I don't have to log in first. I don't have to do anything. So anyone can create posts. Anyone can delete posts. Anyone can do anything they want. Obviously, that's not how your API is going to work. Uh, you're going to want to ensure that users are logged in to perform certain operations. And there may be certain operations where they don't necessarily need to be logged in, depending on how you want to structure your application, right? Because, you know, if it's like a, a Twitter like application, right? Anyone can see anyone's tweets. I just can't delete anyone else's tweets, right? And to create a tweet, I have to be logged in. Uh, and so it depends on what you want to do for your application. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off by forcing the user to be logged in before they can create a post. And doing this is actually really simple. So let's go to our uh, post.py and let's find our create posts. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to import OAuth 2, which is coming from this OAuth 2 py file. And then in our create posts path operation function, we're going to add an extra dependency. And this dependency is going to be the uh, create or sorry, get current user function that we defined in our OAuth 2 file. So we'll say is depends, and then we'll say OAuth 2.get underscore current user. And then we're going to store this in a variable called, uh, we'll say user underscore ID. And this is going to be a integer. Okay. And so all this is saying is that uh, this function is now going to be a dependency. So this is what forces the users to have to be logged in before they can actually create a post. And so when this function is called, whenever they hit this endpoint, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to call this function. And this function, all this function does is really just call the verify access token but, and passing in the, in the token, which comes from the user. Uh, and so it takes the token. Uh, we first decode the token. We extract the ID from the payload. And if there's no ID, we throw an error. And then you can see we validate the schema. Uh, and then this, sorry, this is something I actually added in uh, off camera. So we can just delete that and then go back to what you guys have. Um, but we ultimately return the token data, which is nothing more than the ID, right? So we could rename this as ID for now. But like I said, in the future, you may want to add extra uh, fields into the payload. And then it's no longer just the ID. It's going to include extra information. So we're going to return the ID, which then gets returned by the get current user function. And then in our post.py, uh, in our function, we're going to return the ID and store it in a variable called user ID. And so then we can ultimately access the user ID by just calling user underscore ID. That's it. And we can do whatever we want uh, with this user ID. And you'll see we'll eventually add some more logic. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to print it out just to see what we see. And let's go ahead and try this. So first of all, I'm going to create post. And then we're going to see what happens now when I try to create a post. Look at that, not authenticated. So by putting in that extra dependency, we have ensured that the user has to be authenticated before they can use this post. Now, how do we actually provide the token so that we can actually use the create post? Well, first of all, let's get a token. So we're going to go to the login user. I'm going to hit send. I'm going to get a brand new token. And then what we want to do is we want to go to create post. And then we want to go do headers. And then we want to create a header. And you know, you can see I, can, I created one already, but uh, I'm going to type this out for you from scratch in the line below it. So we say authorization is going to be the, the key. And then the column is going to be, and you type the word in bearer because it's a bearer type token. So you do bearer with a capital B, space, don't forget the space, and then paste it in. Okay. And so now this is included in our header. And so we should be able to send a request. And so now look at this. We were now successfully able to um, send our token. The API was able to validate. It was a valid token. And it was able to then allow us to create a post. And uh, just another little postman tip. Uh, you can uncheck this for now so that it's not authorized. See, if I try to do it now, you see I get an error. You can go into authorization and then just type in, uh, go to bearer token and then paste it into here. 
does the same exact thing. Uh, it's just, you don't have to type in the word bearer for yourself and then, you know, have to do all of that. You could just hit send now and it does, does the same exact thing, whichever method you prefer more. Now that we've protected our create posts route, uh, let's go ahead and do this with some of our other routes. So it's just a matter of just copying the dependency for get current user. And then uh, for retrieving a post, well, remember this part is up to you. You decide ultimately what routes you want a user to be logged in to actually perform an operation. Um, but for delete posts, I'm definitely gonna force a user to be logged in. And for update posts, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then finally, uh, you know, like I said, for getting posts, you know, it, it's really up to you. Um, we'll say that you have to be logged in to do anything. So for get posts or getting all posts, we want to make sure that they're logged in. And then for getting an individual post, we want to make sure that they're logged in. And then finally, the last thing that we, well, it's not the last thing, but uh, one of the things I forgot to do is under auth.py, when we send our access token uh, after they log in, uh, if you remember, in under schemas, we actually created a token model. Uh, oh, sorry, token schema. We never actually used it. So let's actually use that um, by setting the response model here. And this is going to be schema dot token. Schemas dot token. So let's save this. And this should be capitalized. Sorry about that. And so now if we log in a user, we should still get no errors. So perfect. Okay. So just in case in the future, we accidentally change something, uh, we're still going to perform that validation to ensure that the token, on we only send those two fields when we return a token. Now let's quickly just test all the other routes. Uh, so if I do get posts and I hit send, you can see, well, let me save everything. Sorry about that once again. Now, if I hit send, you can see I'm not authenticated. So I have to do the same thing. Uh, so once again, you can do authorization bearer, or you can go to authorization and then just select bearer token and then paste in the token. And now if I hit send, oh, sorry. I got to recopy the token again. Now, if we send, it works now. Get one post. Let's try this. Not authenticated, we'll go into authorization, bear token, send, that works. Deleting posts, go to once again to authorization. And there's no post with an ID of three, about four. All right, that worked. And then finally, update post. We're gonna do the last thing and bear token. All right, and that works. And then let's just double check to make sure that if there's no token, what happens? Error, perfect. Okay guys, so I think that's going to wrap up this video for now. We've pretty much done uh, all the authentication that we need to do up to this point.